फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन वी आर लाइव नाउ सो गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन वी वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर दिस सीरीज ऑफ मास्टर क्लासेज इन हैंड सर्जरी and uh, today's master class is the facts and myths about the digit replantation so on behalf of rajasthan orthopedic surgeon association i honorary secretary dr rahul katta welcomes you all today we have a galaxy of faculty uh, from the national level and from the doza level who will guide all of the orthopedic surgeons regarding these facts with few of the case presentations to formally start the proceedings of today's webinar i would like to invite the president of roza dr vinay goel to say a few words over to you vinay goel sir hello everybody good evening all the esteemed faculty and uh, <clears throat> so here another series uh, another topic very interesting topic and uh, in the implantation of the digits surgeon surgical team as well as infrastructure of the hospital is very important because uh, after implantation we give heparin and all so that is to be uh, that is to be managed also so let us uh, let us see what our experts tell us and uh, this is please uh, start the procedure yes thank you thank you sir uh, thank you for your kind words so at the outset uh, we would like to thank our esteemed faculty from coimbatore dr hari and from bangalore dr jitendran uh, today's uh, webinar is moderated by uh, dr amit vyas who is the joint secretary of roza so i last i request dr amit vyas to take over uh, the moderate and first introduce the faculty and then start the proceedings over to you amit thank you sir so uh, as dr vinay goel sir and uh, dr rahul katta sir has told that today we are going to discuss about the digital reimplantation facts and bits about this so uh, roza office bearer has uh has keen interest to uh, discuss this topic because uh, uh in the rajasthan uh, rajasthan is a agriculture uh, state a lot of agriculture injuries are there and uh, uh, every day we are getting these type of injuries so uh, all orthopedic surgeons should know uh, what is the uh, best outcome about this for this so uh, uh, we have invited uh, uh, the masters of the subject uh, our guest faculty is first dr hari venkat ramni sir sir is a senior consultant at most pre prestigious institute of uh, hand surgery institute of india and abroad also that is the ganga hospital uh, uh, i had uh, opportunity to work with sir for two years and uh, the first uh, uh, thing uh, which impressed me he is quite quick micro surgeon and uh, in the night when in the even in the night at 2 o'clock when implantation come he comes uh, suddenly and he starts the things and finishes very fast and uh, sir has uh, uh, a good uh, academic career also and uh, he is president elect of indian society of peripheral nerve surgery and he is secretary of uh, indian society of reconstructive micro surgery and breakers breaker plexus surgery group of india and sir uh, is associate editor of indian journal of plastic surgery plastic and reconstructive surgery and international micro surgery journal and he has published 16 uh, book chapters nearly 200 international and national uh, presentations and 90 peer review articles and uh, to uh, his uh, he has awarded by dr rajasabhapati leadership award in 2020 peet prize that is the prestigious prize of uh, uh, 
uh, Association of Plastic Surgery of India, Cleaner Assay Award of EPSI, and Professor Robert Eklund International Travel Fellowship of Indian Society of Surgery of the Hand. So, with this uh, and our second uh, uh, guest faculty is Dr. N. Jitendran. Uh, uh, sir is working uh, in hospital in Bangalore and uh, he is also, uh, although I uh, he is considered as a young uh, budding microsurgery, but he is excellent microsurgeon and his area of interest is uh, microsurgery means uh, uh, you can do small digital implantation, small free flaps. So, it, it, uh, and he's well versed microsurgeon uh, from the Bangalore, and uh, he has also uh, published some uh, book chapters and uh, uh, color atlas, and he has nearly ten publications in the national and international journals. So I welcome Dr. Uh, Jitendran sir. And with this, uh, we have uh, our esteemed Roja faculty, uh, Dr. Asoka, Asok Khandaka sir. Sir, uh, he's, uh, as we all know that uh, he's senior most uh, uh, orthopedic surgeon uh, in the Jaipur. And uh, he's a director of orthopedic department of most modern hospital of uh, uh, Jaipur, that is the Khandaka Hospital. And uh, basically, it is a landmark hospital in Jaipur for orthopedic surgery. And he is also associated, associated with, initially, he was associated with the SMS Hospital. And uh, he is a visiting professor at uh, Mahatma Gandhi Medical College also. So then, uh, uh, in the younger generation, uh, Dr. Anand Prakash, uh, He's a product of uh, SMS Hospital and uh, he's a uh, senior consultant uh, at Churu Medical College. And uh, Dr. Uh, Ashok Meena and Dr. Ahete Shyam, both are uh, trained from the hand surgery unit of SMS Hospital, Jaipur. And uh, Dr. Uh, Ashok Meena is working as consultant uh, in uh, at the DOSA and uh, Aitesham, uh, he's, uh, he's working at Kuchamin city. Uh, and uh, with this, uh, I also welcome and uh, thank to uh, Dr. Vinay Goyal, president of uh, uh, Roja and secretary, Dr. Rahul Katta, sir. So without uh, wasting too much time, uh, I would first invite Dr. Hari Venkat Ramni, sir. Welcome, sir. And uh, please uh, start your talk. Thank you, Dr. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Amit. And it is a great pleasure to be here. Uh, is, it, is everything clear? And I'm audible, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. OK. <laughs> the small introduction about Jitendran is uh, basically an orthopedic surgeon trained in plastic and then a microsurgeon. So I think he's got all the three qualifications. So when uh, Dr. Amit asked me to present on digital replants and the thumb replant, so do and don'ts basically or what. So my presentation will sort of encompass from fingertip to multi-digit. So I just divided into like four types. So this is, has been just before COVID, uh, our statistics. If you see here, digit forms the maximum number of replants right up to shoulder disarticulation. And it has now, over a period of last two to three years, uh, become more. But then you need to realize that if you need to do even this number of replants, you will be getting at least 10 fingers which are injured and doesn't need replant. So a busy replantation unit will be doing on an average, say 50 to 60 replants per year, whereas they will be doing around 500 hand injury cases. So that is what we need to remember. I always put this slide, basically everybody asks, what is the secret of your success? I think it's just you. And uh, once you just apply yourself, uh, you will find that replantation becomes easy. Because if you see something like this, which is very common all over India, and this is an injury which has happened in a machinery, but similar injuries you will find in sugarcane, 
or some chara machine chara in north india so when you have a amputation like this first reaction is just shorten and close and this is where having a senior input at the time of arrival of the patient is very important if you see the x ray the only digit which is reasonably preserved is a little finger so before you throw anything first you examine the amputated part and the hand under anesthesia this is very important and once you do that you will realize that the little finger is quite good and it can be replanted then you need to think which level you want to replant so this patient the ideal level is if you replant on the thumb even if he doesn't have any other fingers he can use the thumb and that is what we did and here another very small thing you can do you have a lot of arteries in the palm so you can take the palmar artery itself as a vein graft rather than trying to do vein graft from another location finally this raw area though we advised him a flap he did not want it and it just ended with a skin graft so now this patient has gone back to his own village from urissa if you if you see him we are not seen him recently but then he can still use this because we have done all tendon repairs and the thumb is still very useful and can do lot of activities so this is to tell you where we are today and the importance of not throwing anything away now we start with the tips so fingertips is what you will normally or very commonly get in any emergency department of any hospital in our country so they bring tips like this it is nowadays we find three age groups which are very common children who have accidental injuries in door crush or small machine they put their hand or nowadays we get a young group who are cleaning their bikes especially the enfield bike and without uh, sort of stopping the gear they put the vehicle in gear and then they clean the bike and that's where they get this kind of amputation so the first thing is having full belief that you can do it that is number 1 because the infrastructure which is needed for doing this is now available all across india so there is no lack of infrastructure in many most of the centers so first you need to believe that it is worth it if you believe that it is worth it you will find that the outcome is good and this is one of the first cases we did at the beginning of covid in fact this patient the parents were covid and then we did covid and then uh, and then get a good result out of that so it is a best form of reconstruction so this is an index finger which normally you will not even see but if you see under the microscope and that is what i will come in the next few slides you will always find a nice reasonable size artery and vein so this is the same girl if you see here that's the level of amputation and she has gone back to right and using the hand again so she uses the same fingertip to right the reason why replants at distal tip is successful is the force in the artery is very strong if you see this this is a little finger at the dip joint and that is the amount of bleeding you can get so that's a nice jet of blood which is flowing and this is what makes it successful so before you start you need to know some basic anatomy so if you see the lunula in our finger is the level where the common digital artery join together and form an arch so you can get a central artery as seen here if it's at this level the artery is 0.5 mm in size veins are little bigger in size but if it is at the nail level there is only palmar veins no dorsal vein available you need to have the sequence in your mind and start with the sequence so start with the veins then artery then skeletal so we will go one by one the first step is to stabilize the part to stabilize the part the part is very small and these are my fingers here so we find this technique to be very good you stabilize between the ring finger of both hands use your index and middle on index and thumb on either side so you can do it yourself without any assistant the other technique we find useful if the part is little bigger you take the suture pack take a stitch through the nail plate and you can the assistant just holds it and you can stabilize even simpler thing you take a large thumb forceps or an adsen forceps you just push it inside and this is how we prepare the part so see here the veins are just under the skin so the first step of preparing the part is to identify the artery and vein we don't even do debridement before first you identify the artery and vein only after you have identified the artery and vein we do the debridement and at the end of preparation it should look like this you see that's a nice vein 
artery and nerve are on the volar side all the fat around it we have removed or skeletonized it this is of two advantages one is easy to locate it when we put it back and it causes less swelling and edema so post operative tightness of the at the suture line is also less you squeeze the art, the the part you will see the small droplet coming out of the vein so this step should be done only under microscope so one other thing you should not do when the patient brings the part is try to squeeze it and remove all the blood out of it as soon as the part is received put it in a clean bag put a nice rubber band around it and put it in a ice bag and only remove it when you are brought it under the microscope so then you don't you don't squeeze the blood out of it veins are very superficial they are large size but they are very thin so there is very carefully you identify them it is easy to do but they are because they are very thin they cause uh, they can cause tear so that's a dorsal vein and volar vein as i said if there is no if it is at the level of the nail bed now we have moved on without using the clamps this also you can do quite comfortably you see this is under microscope so we don't apply any clamps you do from one side to other and just flip the uh, suture on the extreme sides and to the back wall so you can get a repair like this this is what i mentioned if you remove all the fat away you can apply clamps also otherwise the space is so less that you cannot apply any clamps so then you have to go to this technique without clamp anastomosis having good instrumentation and suture is very important so you cannot do this fine operations without having the right instrumentation and the most important instrument in the microsurgery set is the vessel dilator because you need to pass it inside the small size artery and vein and we use 100 or 110 both are available in now very freely available only thing it is cost the 10-0 is roughly 4 to 5,000 and 11-0 is also between 5 to 6,000 per foil. But usually you require one or maximum two in case of a tip replant. Now we come to skeletal stabilization. So we follow a no KY technique and this is very useful because this experience has come to us from door crush injuries. When you have door crush injuries, all we do is a nail bed repair and the skeleton is quite stable. So that is what we do is a total amputation at the nail bed. sterile matrix level so you do only nail bed repair the bone comes in alignment then you do the artery and vein the advantage is that because we are not putting k wire there is some mobility present which will allow us to do the artery and vein once you have done the artery and vein we start suturing from the dorsal side and complete the suture on the volar side so this is an advantage of not putting the k wire other advantage is also medullary cavity at this level also works in venous drainage so that is an added advantage of not putting a k wire and you see the same patient 6 months post op bone also goes to unite well when it is avulsed from the nail bed as seen here we take mattress sutures from the skin through the nail bed like this and come out this again securely puts the fingertip back into position artery is deeper vein is superficial because they are subdermal so you do the artery and vein no k wire done and you see the bone has gone for good union the role of vein grafts even though the size is very small and the gap is very less you will always find one of the common cause of failure in tip replants and digital replants is tight closure or tight repair on table they may be able to you may be able to pull them and repair them but here you see we have just put a 4 mm size vein graft vein graft has been taken from the dorsum of the same finger so don't hesitate in putting vein graft so that is one important thing to remember when you don't find the veins what we do so what we do when you don't find the veins we always try to repair the vein but if you don't find the vein this is what we do now and we do a chemical leaching this is a nice picture so i put this picture but now we do the same thing we slice the palmar skin and apply leach or uh, apply heparin swab so this is what we put abo elbow slab cast and in the cast we write like this every 15 seconds the nurse will come <coughs> or the doctor alternatively between the doctor and the nurse we scratch it with a leven blade blood will come out once the blood come out comes out you put a heparin droplet on it so this is a patient only artery repair done no vein available and that's a amount of that's a result you can get so the results are very gratifying so don't hesitate in replanting even though you don't find the vein it takes 4 to 5 days of uh, uh, 
of the chemical leaching usually the first 48 hours is important after that the skin starts healing so we don't put any skin suture you see here hardly just one suture is there the skin heals beautifully without any suture now coming to bone fixation and bone shortening this is very important when it is close to the joint do not hesitate in doing arthrodesis of the dip joint or ip joint of the thumb so this is how it is you see here it is at the level of the joint just the neck of the middle phalanx we go for primary fusion of the dip joint if you have multi digit involvement always do the non microsurgical part and then finally do the thumb replant so you see here we have done two vy advancement flaps two cross finger flaps and finally done the replantation of the thumb and here we have done the replantation of the thumb and the cross finger flap for the index finger so do do all your non microsurgical part first and come back and do the uh, replant do we always need to repair the nerves nerves whenever available and found always repair but even if you don't repair the nerve see this is an example where we are not repaired the nerve we just trimmed it and done the replant but if you see his sensory assessment at 9 month at 1 year still you get protective sensation between 8 to 9 mm and this happens because the nerves grows through the skin edges and through the deeper elements and come and give them protective sensation why i am stressing so much on tip replants because if you are not comfortable in doing tip replants then doing replants in small children is very difficult so that is why to maintain your skill levels it is nice to do a lot of fingertip replants so this is a child you see here this is not exactly a tip it is at the middle phalanx level but then the size is quite similar to an adult fingertip replant so now we move on to finger and thumb replantation here the structures are bigger there is no muscle so you can take your own time you can do it leisurely there is no emergency to no urgency but we always do the replants at night there are some centers who who say that you can do it next day morning you keep it in ice preserve it keep it in the fridge come back and do it next day morning but then we always prefer to do that because dr sabapati my chief has a nice uh, statement he says if you do it at night you become a replantation center if you do it next day morning you still remain a replantation surgeon so if you want to create a center you should do them at night so how long can you wait so this is another myth which people have so this is a patient who had injury in saudi arabia you see here these are the injured part the only finger which was good was this index finger here the longest finger actually the ring finger here so here what we did at 30 hours so he came to us he flew from saudi to kerala from kerala by road at 30 hours we replanted the ring on to the index finger why index finger we always find see so if you see the post operative of the same patient index finger always gives you better better function though we we think that putting it on the ring or little will give you more span or bigger uh, bigger grasp but index is much useful especially for all our day to day activities writing and now with cell phone for texting also so again here is an example of heterotrophic replant i showed one example before but if you have a injury like this then don't hesitate in immediately taking a decision of putting this index onto the thumb if you see here though the thumb can be done but it is more avulsed and crushed whereas the index has better length because once you shorten it you will get better vessels so we have done the shortening and here again the thumb is crushed badly but the index is good so put the index onto the thumb it is technically not difficult because you got better length because once you shorten the index you get extra length of the artery vein nerves everything you get and the proximal tendons are always available so before you throw away any finger always think very hard and try to think where you can put it and thumb is the choice now coming to zone 2 again another myth and world over there are uh, there are a lot of articles which keep saying that zone 2 finger and border digits that is little finger and index finger should not be replanted if you ask a survey or a poll among even micro surgeons across the world many will say that it is not worth replanting because they feel that zone 2 repair or zone 2 flexor tendon will get poor outcome but here is a classic example and this is another example of a little finger if you see here if you shorten it at the base and just put a small skin graft functionally there is going to be no difference everything 
the the person can do the child can do but here if you see here he was actually a manual worker we have replanted it it is short but he is one of the happiest patient we have you see the flexion he gets we did only the fdp repair but with the shortening the fdp repair repair gives a excellent outcome so this is a multi centric study which we with professor kevin chung who is editor of prs now started and this was to study patient related outcomes following single digit replantation and mainly index finger was the finger which they wanted and we found the conclusion was with technical feasibility replantation is recommended always if if possible and the patient wants it and it is up possible so doing single digit replant is worthwhile and patients are always happy and even age is not a bar so again when you when replantation comes like this this is one of our oldest patient he was 78 when he when we came and when we took this picture he was 82 he was father in law of one doctor he went to a marriage is a ring avulsion amputation and we did this replant he was one of the most satisfied patient he we had and young age again when child is very small always you need a good anesthesiologist but if your anesthesiologists are willing to give anesthesia and they are good then you can go ahead and replant because as i mentioned before the experience gains in gained in fingertip will always come useful here again you see the index is not good but then what we did was we did a heterotrophic replant we did the ring on to the index and the middle and uh, the in, sorry index on the present uh, the uh, ring on the index middle on to the middle itself and this is the outcome we can get at uh, nearly a, a one year outcome so now we see the sequence it is quite similar only thing we do the artery repair in the end when we have finger replant the reason why this has been kept bold is that if you do artery repair before everything starts bleeding and many times once a finger is pink you do a suboptimal extensor tendon flexor tendon all repairs so finish everything as i mentioned before ischemia time is not a big uh, big issue again raise very thin skin flaps to get the artery and vein the thing to remember in the in the border digits index little finger and the thumb border digits the inner artery is a larger artery and outer nerve is a larger nerve so this anatomical fact you need to keep in mind so this is a thumb you see here the ulnar digital artery of the thumb is nearly double the size of the radial digital artery so given a choice always do the inner artery in the border digits any small till skin tag don't cut it off so don't cut off this and try to do it as a single digit replant retain this skin flap because it will aid in your venous drainage and that's what we did and you see here the skin has beautifully healed and it was very useful to have because we did common digital artery and common uh, a vein in between so it drains everything now coming to bone shortening we saw in the case of tip replants when it comes to bone shortening always do bone shortening on the distal part because keep in mind if the finger or a replant fails still we will have adequate length so shorten it on the side on the distal side so in the thumb we go for ip fusion but when it it is close to the joints what we do so here you see it's a three digit replant the ring finger the joint is in the distal side so you shorten on the ring side on the ppx on this side uh, middle phalanx on this side this middle finger is through the joint so you need to arthrodise it so shortening is achieved with arthrodisis but here again the joint is there and the index finger so you shorten distally so you keep that in mind when you do shortening try to preserve the joint whenever possible so this is a patient you see here the index has got good flexion ring has also got good flexion middle finger we have arthrodised so that is doesn't have pip flexion so you need to keep this in mind to just to remind you again shorten it on the side away from the joint so that you can maintain joint function now coming to bone fixation you can do it like this ss wire 9090 which is very stable and strong but it takes time and sometimes gets entangled so if you want to do quick fixation distal to the M mp joint axial k wires are quite good only thing is once you put axial k wire take some periosteal sutures or soft tissue sutures so that it does not rotate and that is quite good enough another tip when you have long skin sleeve so ring avulsion only the distal phalanx is there and you have a long thin sleeve you can make a temporary sleeve like this because getting a small sleeve a uh, ready made sleeve is difficult so you take a long venflon and just cut the tip and you can get a fixation like this so you can pass it inside 
because if you see here the skin is long skin sleeve the bone is right in the center and this is a ring avulsion amputation so how many arteries and vein to do this is a very important always asked question the myth is that you need to do double the artery the double the veins uh, as compared to artery the actual fact is that if the artery is 1 mm in size then you do two veins of 1 mm each but if you have a big 2 mm vein that is enough so basically the circumference of the vein should be double the artery continuously we use irrigation solution which is like this 200 ml of saline with 25 ml of xylocaine with 200 2000 units of heparin and this is used to flush all the time post operatively distal to the mcp joint even mid palm we put a cast like this the advantage of the cast is keeps it elevated keeps it warm easy to observe the finger from the top and the patient cannot also move inside the cast so this is very stable nice we keep it between 7 to 14 days and at the 14th day we remove it under a block and do a good dressing and remove all the sutures kv are removed at 4 weeks time for skin closure many times you can just leave it it will heal but if you have a bigger raw area just put small split thickness graft on table now coming to vein graft whenever we take vein graft we always ligate one end leave the other vein open and the dictum to remember is blood flows through the open end and always flush the vein graft so you flush the vein graft to just minimally dilate it so that and also check for the leaks it is nice to do it at this stage because later on there will be leaks and cause a lot of bleeding the other thing to remember always measure and take exact length of my vein graft and always keep in mind if you are doing vein graft near the joint what will be the final position of the finger so if the patient is going to move the finger then put a k wire and prevent movement at the finger and avoid excessive or redundant length of the vein graft so exactly measure the vein graft so that's the radial artery and that's the ulnar digital artery of the thumb exactly measure the vein graft and put the vein graft exactly to the length we need so this is an avulsion replant the vein graft is put exactly the same way so the vein graft will come and from this from here to here so again for the thumb remember the ulnar digital is bigger so aim for the ulnar digital now coming to the mcp joint at the thumb what do you do to the avulsed tendons for thumb you don't need to worry about the tendons because the thinner muscle is very good only thing the patient will not have ip joint movement that is okay because functionally still it is very useful if you insist on having an ip joint movement you can take one of the slips from the ring finger and get the ip joint movement if you don't have the part or the part is severely crushed we don't now higher microsurgical skills and with experience in toe transfers we even nowadays do acute toe transfer not at the middle of the night you just put a dressing come back in next day or 48 hours and you can do a toe transfer this is a small child the part was not retrievable for replant so we have done a toe transfer in 48 hours time and you can get a good result so what have we learned and this is a dictum you need to follow on an average we try to keep 2 hours as a limit for the finger of course you can take 2 and half to 3 hours also because if you want to do multi digit replant if you cannot do a single digit in 2 then doing multi digit will be very difficult so you need to plan how many fingers you want to do it so this is the last part of my presentation which is multi digit replant so don't panic and don't fear always decide which fingers are good and what you are going to do and always get a team available so when you say team there is a common word team team doesn't mean two surgeons you see team means basically two nurses two sets of instruments and even in most cases two sets of microscope then only you get a two team approach that way you can do bilaterally and you can do simultaneously cutting down the time and take always adequate breaks and take as many people available you can call for help decide what you are going to replant don't waste your time in preparing the part which you are not going to replant there are two techniques structure by structure and digit by digit what do you mean by structure by structure you put k wires in all do all the extensor tendons do all the veins do all the flexor tendons and finally do all the arteries one by one one finger by one so that way the time is saved for a three fingers you don't need to you don't waste seven eight hours you can do it in four to five hours because you are doing structure by structure if you do finger by finger it will take much more time so this is the result of the same patient this is what we do whenever we have multi digit replant so if you have replant like this we always prefer structure by structure technique this is only case where we are done finger by finger 
because this patient came to us quite late and by the time we started it was already 15 hours of ischemia so we wanted the thumb and index to be done first so we started with the thumb index and went to the little when we reached the little it was nearly eight, nearly 20 hours and that time the patient could not lie straight so we had to give general anesthesia to do the little finger we pushed for it because we wanted a five finger replant and the patient was also quite insistent that he gets five so it's very important to build your mental and physical stamina because by the time you finish multi digit replants usually it is around 14 to 18 hours start physiotherapy as soon as you remove the k wire so once you remove the k wire start physiotherapy and tell the patient that patient will need at least 3 months of physiotherapy patients are always happy with initial survival but long term satisfaction is because of the tendon reconstruction have your secondary reconstructive capability also enhanced so this is an avulsion don't worry about the tendon on day 1 get the finger survive once it is survive then you can do a silicon rod come back and do a two stage tendon transfer and that's the same patient he has got good function following tendon reconstruction final few slides this is technology will keep changing this is a nice slide this is matterhorn so 1932 this is a shoe the mountaineers are wearing and this is a shoe they wear now so the risk of failure is the same technology may change but the risk of failure and failures will happen the more you replant the the number of failures will also corresponding it will be more because you will be doing more and more difficult cases so this is the first microscope in our department which came in 1991 and this is the latest microscope we have so even though the technology has changed even in our department you will still get failure failures are very disheartening but as soon as you get failure you push yourself and do a successful replant so this is one of the youngest arm replant we have had in our department this is a one year old child arm replant we shorten the bone at the humeral level and we preserve the joint also by putting a distal radius plate for the elbow joint and that's the elbow joint preserved shortening done at the higher level and this is the result at four years outcome four year follow up so moment you get a failure push yourself try to get something which you have never done before so this is one of the youngest child we have never done before and you get a good outcome and this outcome will sort of erase the memory of the failure so finally i bring you greetings from our department and all of us in our department do regular replants and it is a teamwork as i showed in most of the cases you would have realized you need a good team of anesthesiologists and plastic surgeons and the hand surgeons uh, in, in this is dr praveen bharadwaj all of you would be familiar with so thank you very much and we are open for questions thank you thank you sir for uh, excellent and eye opening talk yes. and uh, it is just uh, making me nostalgic about ganga training yes and uh, first and foremost question from my side yes uh, what is your tips to uh, upgrade yourself your uh, a surgeon from implantation surgeon to a implantation center yes so first of all if you want to be a replantation center you need to you need to educate your staff so if i call your hospital and tell i have a finger amputation how should i bring the part i think your telephone operator your ambulance driver your security guard in your hospital and your staff should be able to answer the question and many times your wife and your spouses also should be able to answer so once the once everybody is having that common aim and idea i think it's very easy to become a replantation center so that's number one educate everybody around you number two you try to do, you do very good finger reconstruction so every fingertip injury comes you treat them very well if you treat lot of fingertips very nicely you will start getting lot of finger replantations if you don't you don't recon, you cannot be a replantation surgeon that i will do only replant even today i am on call we have already had nearly four to five fingertip injuries so they will keep coming and out of this five to six one will end up having replantation so you need to treat smaller injuries very well to get the bigger replantation so and the third thing is in our hospital as you are aware we don't charge anybody on arrival all are given block 90% of the surgeries 90% even the children which i showed all are done under regional anesthesia only block only sedation is given for giving the block so cut down the cost cut down on your wastage 
keep the cost as low as possible don't charge them on arrival because none of them have the money in their pockets but they usually end up paying as you know 95% of patients will pay 95% of what you say so if you do that then they are they know okay you get finger gets injured i have to go to this place so they will come to you and that once you create that it is very difficult by other people other hospital other departments to beat you because uh, it's very difficult for them yes uh, uh, rightly you rightly said that uh, i uh, i'm quite aware that uh, one 10 finger reimplantation was done in 10000 only yes because patient was he told that uh, in ganga that i am having only 10000 rupees and sir told okay we'll do yes. and uh, any other question from other faculty uh yes dr hari can i ask you a question Actually, yes please I a small orthopedic hospital basically it's a general hospital yes sir to lot of trauma we also have an associate who is doing regular hand surgery yes sir but we are finding it very difficult to develop a team yes sir for uh, microvascular surgery and implantations because the problem is of the anesthetists the ot staff and the nurses and uh, the assistants because the only hand surgeon cannot do the job correct and the uh, residents are also reluctant to and most of these injuries come late in the night yes sir 10 o'clock 11 o'clock sometimes middle of the night so how how to go about uh, yes sir sir and, uh, it's a very for that yes a very nice question and that's what dr sabhavati my chief keeps getting asked all the time so number one is whoever wants to start the leader or the team leader has to work hardest at least for the first 5 years he has to come at night most of the nights so i have been in ganga for 23 years now in the initial time that is for the first 5 years i was on call for one week so there are there were days where we will do replants whole night for one four five days consecutive and we will work the whole day so sometimes you will even forget how many fingers or how many veins we have done because so tired we were so you need to work like that for the initial period number one number two coming to anesthesiologist you need to have a very good anesthesiologist and when we do replants the anesthesiologist only gives a block but he gets paid as a major surgery so he gets paid one third of the surgeon's price as we will do for a tkr or a spine surgery or a major surgery if you think it is only a block and you pay him for a block then no anesthetist will be interested in giving a block and sitting at night for 10 hours then he can do 10 cesarean sections by giving spinal or different uh, smaller procedures so anesthesiologist has to be paid one third of say if you charge 1 lakh surgeon's fees i think 30 to 35000 anesthesiologist should be paid only for the block because then only when you pay him for blocks then he will take care of your small kids as i showed and all those cases now the staff again so staff has to work in rotation and you need to train two three in every level so two three nurses two three ward boys and they need to work so you can de skill lot of things you don't need uh, high end people you can de skill them for uh, assisting in preparation part preparation you can call for help when you get a replant so what we what we were doing like even we do now i can call the other consultants or other fellows so similarly if your hospital get something you can call from other people you can call for help from people who are freelancers or who can come and help you for that because even if you don't get paid or paid less for a replant replant bigs brings only makes big news no other surgery makes headline news anywhere in the country in newspapers in tv in a school if you replant a child the whole school knows that child has got replant and whole all the children's parents know they got replant so a lot of hospitals spend a lot of money in marketing or trying to popularize or do advertisements you don't need to do that you have replant is a walking advertisement in your neighborhood in your society in your city so i think uh, there has to be a different approach when you do uh, replantation so second thing is about the cost the, as yes. a hospital i am ready to sacrifice the charges of the hospital right the, uh, but at least the patient should be able to pay the the, the consumables yes correct to just correct. and everything correct but at least we should be able to get the cost of the anesthetist the assistant yes so that is also a big problem when we but, but sir what you try to yes. start this kind of service correct so very nice uh, statement dr shivraj patil 
uh, uh, who came to our hospital and is uh, sparsh hospital director's father you know from uh, bangalore and he says very nice thing he said one is the rich always follow the poor so you do 10 poor replants you will realize there will be the then only three four rich patients will come who have insurance and who will be ready to pay you get experience by operating and by doing good service and good success rate in poorer patient and there will be time it's just matter of time see when we when people were doing spine surgery complex scoliosis initially they're all poor if you take any specialty initially you will get only poor patients you will get lymphedema poor patients diabetic foot poor patients and uh, but then once you get experience your center becomes a replantation center all the rich and famous because injury happens to everybody injury doesn't yes. see whether you are poor or rich so they will be flown you see 30 30 hours the patient comes from saudi arabia he has flown insurance pays for it and his bill would have come to around 8 to 10 lakhs only transportation will be so high but the company is ready to pay so but then that would not have been possible if you are not doing regularly finger replants so initially when you start there will be difficult times but then i i assure you in 5 years time or even not even 5 3 to 4 now insurance companies pay a lot of money so insurance companies uh, are ready to go with 3 to 3.5 lakhs and all the people who get bike chain injuries they are all insured so insurance is not a issue and consumables if you really see in finger replants is very less it is hardly anything it's just two sutures and uh, one k wire and one pop slab that's all you need and some flex tendon one uh, two files of 30 so if you really see the consumables for a replant is less than 10000 rupees which is uh, hardly anything and under block so block is very cheap but the time is limited but i just want to finish with one last question yes sir and you must also be facing the same problem because of the these government schemes the minister yes, schemes or state schemes yes sir and uh, that is again a big deterrent whenever we try to start these kind of services in other hospital yes, <clears throat> so we are also pushing to get more money out of the schemes they give sometime 1 lakh sometime 75000 but then again the number of cases which really come through the scheme is very less but if you do that it is also good for the government good for the scheme they are all, they also want us to do and if you write it nicely we we request the local coordinator they give more money also they give up to 2 lakhs also they give in special cases so no not a issue so thank you dr hari for answering you, all sir. my questions and i thank must you, congratulate to you you for excellent work i have never seen this kind of work in my life Thank you sir thank you very much thank you very much for showing you. all your work thank you sir yes any other question by any faculty you want to yes hari sir i want to ask you a question yes sir that what other method do you use for bony fixation apart from kyr fixation in for bony fixation so bone we always use kyr other than the k wire sometimes you can sort of make a peg and push it inside but still you need a k wire uh, we never use plates for uh, digital replants many centers were using actually we remove more plates by replant done in many centers or uh, in other centers so because basically we are we need a quick fixation stable fixation so distal to the mcp joint uh, even when you arthrodes the joint k wires are quite good enough quite nice can we use uh, mini jazz for suzuki frame like fixation very rarely very rarely unless it is very comminuted bone loss but we are shortening the bone so we never face a situation in replant where there is a loss so we can shorten it adequately if you shorten the thumb as i showed you even up to 2 cm of shortening in the thumb is not functionally disabling so we shorten the thumb replant uh, jazz and suzuki frame we use when it is hanging not a replant per se maybe a revascularization where there is a significant bone loss and you want to come back and do a bone transfer bone grafting or some then we do yes we do external fixation only in those situation what are the absolute contraindication like uh, in a case of avulsion injury so, there is a, i think technically there is no contraindication because now people have moved away what is not replantable in one center is replantable in another another center or in another hospital so technically if if it is severely crushed and no structure is like seen like i showed that multiple levels 
like that then technically impossibility is one contraindicate or not possible and patient is very sick so on blood thinners if the anesthetist says that he is not fit for replant then we as you saw our anesthetists are very good they are ready to give us anesthesia for even small children and uh, because they are all many time most of the replant are full stomach when they arrive so if the anesthetist says risk to life because mortality is not acceptable and we can always uh, shorten the finger and uh, so it should not be done so anesthetist fitness absolute contraindication patient is very sick and has got a ejection fraction or any cardiac problem we don't replant in a patient of a uh, chronic smoker yes so chronic actually chronic smoker also is not a contraindication because if you see most of our patients are smokers adult patients hardly we find patients who are not smoker in smoker you have to be little more careful you dissect it more we do more of adventitia trimming we we avoid vein grafts we shorten it more and uh, we give heparinize them and uh, we put a more stable fixation that's all we can do we do a lot of uh, micro surgery in smokers so it is not as such a contraindication but we tell them that there is 50 50 chance that it might go for uh, gangrene if it goes that actually the result i showed a failure was a young smoker all the fingers were gangrenous very rarely you will find that all fingers go gangrenous unless he is a young smoker yes thank you thank you Arish. yes sir rahul katta sir sir you are mute sir mute yeah 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 sorry yes, sir. Uh, for, uh, my question is for the younger surgeons actually yes, you want to refer such patients to the higher centers yes sir see rajasthan is a bigger state so from the periphery to reach to the center where these facilities are available yes sir maybe two or three centers or quite uh, less number of centers are there So, yes, uh, what you feel? How uh, much time is there to go to the center to get the good results? Okay, so the, as I mentioned, so first thing is what I would suggest with uh, Amit being there. If you identify four or five centers across Rajasthan, then everybody can reach. Most of our patient also come four or five hours after the injury only. In digital replant, up to twenty four hours we have attempted. but as the time goes definitely success rate becomes less and less most important if they preserve them well and put that like in a plastic bag cover it and put it in ice then they can refer up to 5 to 6 hours no problem only thing we always insist that if they are referring better to inform the team whom they are referring so that they are well prepared and keep everything ready so that no time is wasted arrival to start of surgery is not wasted so in our hospital for example arrival to a start of replant is 10 minutes the moment he arrives we take an x ray or even don't take x ray many times we start preparing when the x ray machine comes we just bring the part out and take an x ray and start with the preparation so preparation can start immediately and block can be given on arrival so you have no control on injury to arrival but arrival to finish or ischemia time is in your hands so 4 to 5 hours i think nowadays with good ambulance and 108 reaching is i think no longer issue anywhere in india we find patients reaching us up to 500 kilometers in 4 uh, 5 hours they they ambulance brings them quite fast 8 to 9 hours also no problem yeah thank you thank you sir i want to uh, ask one question yes uh, once a patient was referred to me and the amputated part was soaked in the saline yes it happens yes so that is a yeah that is a i won't say contraindication again if it is a thumb or a critical finger we will still attempt it those patients what happens there is some mottling some when some skin uh, sloughs out on the top and then usually they will survive they will survive it will not die but it is not a pure contraindication but if it is so much soaked and edema matters that when you are dissecting the artery and vein they are just coming out like a like a noodles it is so much so much friable then uh, it is that means it is uh, totally destroyed and not not fit for replant but uh, what happens is common mistake is that the knot they put on the plastic bag is not tight enough and the ice by the time they reach your hospital ice is melted so it becomes like an underwater seal so we instruct them that every frequently you you replace the ice 
So that is another thing you should tell the patient when they transport. Better is to take a flask if it is a single digit or an ice box so that the ice doesn't melt and keep changing the ice as it melts on the on on the way. So usually highways in Dhavas they will stop, change the ice and then come. So if you instruct them that then it is quite good enough. But still you should attempt it. It is not a contraindication. Uh, can you say something about quadrasia effect in zone two implantation? Yes. So quadrasia effect happens basically if the index finger of that part or the you have removed the intrinsics. Usually quadrasia doesn't happen in replant because they are all distal to the MP joint. They are not through the palm. So the intrinsics, once you repair it, the intrinsics are either little tighter or nearly the normal similar length because your shortening is being done distal to the uh, lumbrical insertion. So in those cases, what we need to do is we, as much as possible in single digit, what I showed, we don't do both uh, FDS and FDP. And uh, because you are shortening it, the tendon is not so tight. The quadrigia more common will come if you have not shortened it and you trim the FDP tendons and do a tight FDP repair then the finger is very tight and you are not able to extend. More than quadrigia, we find is a, a tight flexor tendon. So that is more, uh, that is not exactly quadrigia. Flexor itself is so tight. Quadrigia is if you have full range and you are not able to get a good grip. So if quadrigia comes, actually you have got a good outcome only. It is nearly, nearly normal. But most common is tight flexors, which is not allowing you full extension. So don't do a very tight repair. Or any any hesitation, flexors are getting tight and there is a gap. Otherwise, then don't do the flexor tendon repair as I showed you. You can always come back and do the flexor tendon repair. The other, other lesson to junior surgeons who are watching, you do the replantation and then uh, when everything heals, you send to Dr. Amit, he can do flexor tendon. Send to a senior surgeon who can do a secondary procedures. He can do a tenolysis, secondary reconstruction. All that you can worry about later. Many times we worry about what will be the outcome and don't do the replant. So don't do that. See, we have done close to now 800 to 900 digital replant and we wanted to write a chapter on non-union in finger replant. We could not get a single case. Actually, the patient I presented that index finger 30 hours, that was the only case of non-union of finger. And that too, because now study says if the ischemia time is long, the bone can go for ischemic uh, necrosis. That's why you get non-union, not because of because we debride it well, shorten it well. Getting non-union is very difficult in uh, digital replant with k wires also. We are not put any rigid fixation. So you do the replant, do quick fixation, get the arteries and vein now, and then you can do all everything else secondarily. And thumb, you can leave it also. Your thumb functions very well with thinner muscles. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. For thank you. Excellent talk. If uh, no question, then uh, yes, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Jitendran yeah. for his uh, case presentation and discussion. Thank you, sir. I want to ask you something. Yeah, sure. Just one second. Just one second. So, after that excellent talk by Dr. Hari, which was very extensive and very elaborate, I'll just show you a few examples of what we do generally and what is the general outcome of such patients. Okay. So, for thumb amputation, this is the distal phalanx level. So, these patients, in these patients, you will not get a dorsal vein. But if there is a small amount of skin which is there on the dorsum like this, then you can get one or two veins here and then you have to do a bola vein here. This is how you search the veins. You may not even have to give an incision. You can just lift the skin above and then you may be able to identify the veins just below the dermis. The dermis in the border aspect is thicker. So you have to be, uh, means close to the dermis but you should go below the dermis. Most of the times, many people will just be doing it 
through the dermis. If you go through just through the dermis, it will not be there. You have to go just below the dermis with a sharp knife. Then only you'll be able to identify the bola veins. And the artery in these is just above the periosteum. If you just see above the periosteum, you'll see the artery. So in this, generally in finger replants, before we used to use heparin as a, as a, as a dictum. Nowadays, we have stopped using heparin as a dictum for all the replants, unless there's a venous condition. If there's a venous condition and we have to do a chemical leaching, then only we are using heparin. Otherwise, no heparin is being used for any of the replants. So this is another case. <coughs> Here you see it's an avulsion amputation. The bone is actually projecting out. And the, in the distal part, there's a more of skin. So here, dorsal veins are done. You can see uh, after shortening, you can do a direct anastomosis without any problem. And then this is after one and a half months. Uh, and then again, this is after seven months. Even though the thumb is short, but as the Dr. Hari also mentioned, that uh, they are still functional. This is another case where you can see it's a machine injury. The thumb is uh, means cut with the serrated edges. So here again, you can do the dorsal veins down here. And then and the, if you see after some time, and the, he can use uh, the thumb effectively for all his activities. He's a villager and he's able to use it for his activities. Okay. So next. This is another case. Here there's a thumb amputation. After a proper replantation, he is able to use the thumb. This for the thumb. Then index finger. Here you can see this patient was referred to us from Mysore. He traveled around 200 kilometers down, down from here. Then he didn't have the middle finger. Middle finger was not brought. It was a bike chain accident. So the DIP joint was arthrodist. It was fused. The middle finger was closed and then after that also he is able to use it effectively. So it's a zone one replant where the patient is able to use the finger which is replanted. There's another case of a zone one amp amputation. It's through the DIP joint. So here if you have a dorsal skin around on the dorsum, you'll be able to, to find to find a a good vein on the dorsum and then with the, with one artery and one vein you should be able to make it survive again here uh, means uh, the dominant distal artery the, which is the ulnar um, distal artery was repaired this is another case bike chain accident traveled around 200 kilometers two or three, uh, two veins were done dorsally and the dominant distal artery was done this this is, a, uh, this is another case here if you see, there are two fingers which are amputated. One finger is not replantable because uh, it was avulsed and the vessels were not good. The other other finger we were able to replant it. One vola vein and uh, the distal artery was done. This other case, this simple replantation was done. Okay, when you have uh, a smaller child, like a one-year-old child. Here, index finger was revascularized and the middle finger was replanted. And this one year afterwards. Okay. So here we have two finger amputations. In this, the artery only was done for the index finger. In the middle finger, we were able to do the, both the veins and arteries because we had good amount of dorsal skin. And if you see the functional outcome, they are reasonably good functional outcome you can get. Here, if you see the amputation is for two fingers, it is through the PIP joint. Both the PIP joints are involved. So we had to fuse the joints. So that's why and the, he doesn't have movements in the PIP joint. But he is able to use the fingers. This is a case where we had four finger amputation. Two fingers survived. One finger we lost. Other finger we didn't replant. This finger we didn't replant. So two fingers, once they are survived, they are useful. That's the important thing. If you do it, it should become useful. Then this is called a ring avulsion amputation, where a ring 
of the finger is got has got caught in any object and it has pulled the finger out so the artery and veins both are cut and it is possibly hanging from a, a few structures so here again the veins are done the artery is done and as dr hari suggested uh, means we we use a cannula and pass the k wire with the small um, syringe cannula and pass the k wire with that we are able to do an um, what do you say a replant or a fixation this is another case where you have a uh, means ring evolution amputation so here again after repair you are able to get a good function so here there are two fingers uh, which are there three fingers are actually injured we did a thena flap for the index finger the middle finger the tip didn't survive but the, for the ring finger the tip has survived here if you see there's a uh, distal amputation here partial survival is seen because of the crushed partial survival is seen here again we can add some soft tissue to get it back this is a case like dr hari told that and you have multiple fingers which are amputated but if you see here carefully the thumb is also amputated and a part of the thumb pulp is gone here this portion so if you see these fingers any one of these fingers where you have uh, good amount of pulp we identified this this portion this finger okay so with that finger we did a pulp transfer for it and the pulp has survived and the rest of the areas were uh, given a groin flap cover that's all thank you Excellent example, sir. Yes, amazing, amazing cases. And uh, so, just to, to actually, he answered all the questions which were discussed before. Number one, how to create a center? So, he's a one-man center in Bangalore. All the replants uh, is able to attract. So, because he he just attends to every replant which comes. You see the number of cases he does. So, he's one of the highest number of replants which he does in his center in his area. So, just uh, you keep attempting. If you keep attempt, see the amazing results. Even many of them cases, even in big uh, centers, I was just uh, shocked to see many other fantastic results. So, congratulations, Jitendra. Very nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. The basic is to keep keep attempting. Whatever case comes, go ahead, see it under the microscope. Only if you think that uh, that is not replantable, then you do a, other form of reconstruction. If you are able to see a good vessel, then go ahead and try and replant. Many times, when others have said that you can't replant it, then also we go ahead and replant it. So, uh, can we throw some light on ring avulsion amputations? Ring avulsion amputation is basically that the ring has got caught on the finger and it has pulled the artery and vein along with the. And usually the fractures are either either the middle phalanx or the other joint, at the DIP joint. So only the distal part is having either only the distal phalanx and a part of the middle phalanx, or only the distal phalanx. So here we can't do a FDP repair. The tendon repair is not possible. But the PIP joint is intact for him. Most of, most of the times in in a ring avulsion operation, the PIP joint is intact. So functionally, they they it's acting as a distal replant it's acting in a distal replant but the skin level of amputation is at the level of proximal pharynx or or at the, at the level of pib joint so functionally they are good only thing is the artery and vein sometimes you will have to put a vein graft to cover to span the this thing and you can do a shortening at the middle pharynx level functionally they always do well yeah i think uh, yes nicely summed it up the only thing difference in a ring avulsion versus others is many times as he showed they are subtotal they don't fully fully come out so they'll be hanging by either as he showed flexor tendon and the avulsion is like differential avulsion usually the ring gets caught either on the volar side or the dorsal side so when you pull it the skin will go more on the volar side or dorsal side depending on where it got caught so and always you will find veins so veins is never an issue the artery 
is differentially cut either the radial artery radial digital will be at one level ulnar will be one so that is one indication where we can switch the artery from one to the other so whichever is longer after you shorten you can cross over to the other side and don't worry about flexor tendon reconstruction because fds is intact so they many of them even don't need a dip fusion and in the future so functionally they are quite good it will be it will be fine in so uh, what are the indication where nothing to do in ring aval gen amputations and where we need to do artery repair and where we need to do vein repair can we arrange sir can we? yeah so basically the classification of ring avulsion so if the artery usually if artery is not involved they won't reach us they won't come to us that means it is viable so like sometimes in children in we just publish an article in south india we have this idli plate what we call idli that is small idlis so the fingers in between the child will put a finger so that's a big ring actually not a small ring and it will get stuck so if you remove it then only the skin is involved the veins and artery are intact so that is the only indication where even if you don't suture the artery the skin on either side it will heal nicely so that is one many times volar side is intact dorsal is gone as i mentioned depends on which side the ring has got caught so in those cases we do only the vein and it is okay but many times if the volar skin is very good intact then if you just suture the dorsum the venous drainage will happen from the volar side so that is also fine but if it is non viable as most of the cases what he presented then you need to explore and do the uh, both artery and vein it is always nice to do artery and vein and uh, so if you do good artery and vein you can have a good night nice sleep that's what i tell everybody so better do artery and vein and uh, the drainage will be better definitely and the uh, other thing is if you have a venous problem you don't have to worry at all if you have venous problem you can always do a chemical leaching and you can make the finger survive even not not only at the tip even at the base if if it is uh, amputated then also if you do a chemical leaching proper chemical leaching then the finger will survive Yeah, so just to put back what is chemical leaching we just shave the molar pulp earlier many reports say you remove the nail you don't need to remove the nail and all you just shave it from the side it will bleed and then with the pink color needle the thickest needle 18 gauge needle the edge of the needle itself is quite thick every 15 minutes you just scrape and bring out some blood when blood comes the finger you color you can immediately see the color changes what was tense and turgid the even few drops of blood will take away the turgidity and then you put heparin nowadays heparin are also available as eye drops they are available as drops you can just put a drop or dr jitendra has a nice technique of putting a venflon and attach it very close so every you just adjust the venflon just like in icu they have a monitor they have these injection syringes it will keep dropping one drop uh, every 10 10 uh, seconds or so so that is also a good way but only thing it makes it little messy so what we do is we just scratch it put the heparin drop don't inject heparin inside the pulp just drop it and just just scratch it again and uh, then come back every 15 minutes till the bleeding continues you keep putting heparin so very rarely we have had to add any transfusion if you see textbooks they will say there will be lot of bleeding but it doesn't happen so much uh, but again you should be you should monitor whether it, too much bleeding is there or not so which type of heparin you use sir for this so regular uh, 5000 units of heparin we put it in one uh, bottle or as, or we load it in 20 cc syringe and then just uh, take little by little and drops uh as dr jitendra told that uh, no he's not using heparin yes, post operatively yes. correct so that is one one school which doesn't use heparin at all we use heparin for distal replants where the size is small because as i said many are smokers many go in spasm so and uh, it can cause uh, stoppage of flow there no as such scientific basis if you really ask scientific basis there is no scientific basis but scientific basis is sort of tilted towards avulsion injuries major crush injuries that is the nature of injury clean cut amputation if you don't give heparin it's fine it will work very well clean cut vessels will work very well vein grafts avulsion more crush element then we have this feeling that heparin is better 
but proximal to the wrist level or even mid palm level we also don't give any heparin because the blood vessels are bigger in size it all depends on the flow so they need to be well perfused okay so the thing is good perfusion lot of fluids keep it warm put a warmer on top or warmer around the fingers so warm perfused and uh, nicely flushed uh, dehydration is one of the causes of causing a uh, vessel going in spasm and blockade and thrombosis no dextran dextran has been banned now in many countries including europe america we have also stopped using dextran that is lomodex for the last nearly 10 years now because it has got lot of complication in the form of renal failure then uh, uh, wheezing and then uh, allergic reactions so even people have had mortality also so dextran should be avoided nowadays at any cost not to be given a question from audience dr yes. samrat tawri from nagpur yes uh, he has asked that uh, uh, washing machine injuries yes now we get very common yes children putting yeah. their hands so it is a, it is a combination of a ring avulsion like injury where usually the the thing swings most of the time what happens is the when the power goes away there is cloth inside and the machine is on so they put their hand inside trying to remove the cloth and the power comes and it starts rotating so that's the commonest way both mixi also same thing happen they are putting their hand power goes away mixi is on when the power comes off their hand is near the mixi and they get mixi uh, cut injury so it is a combination of avulsion we have done uh, actually in covid times we saw a lot of children and lot of husbands putting their hand in washing machine which they are not used to so it is a combination of an avulsion but it, uh, you can get successful replantation in those cases we have had uh, good success same principles what he showed in ring avulsion shorten then well most of the time fds is intact fdp will be avulsed and uh, you can do it you can do it thank you sir and uh, if no other question i would uh, like to invite dr amit mittal yes uh, to present some cases dr amit mittal uh, is also uh, trained hand and micro surgeon and uh, he is working at uh, santok badurlab ji hospital in jaipur so amit please share your cases you are mute sir uh thank you amit vyas ji uh firstly i would like to be very thankful to hari sir and jitendran sir because i learned this all things at ganga hospital from hari sir itself most of the time with hari sir there at ganga hospital so whatever i will show it is not that much will be as compared to their work that they are doing that is what i have doing here just i want to show hari sir always want me to present whenever i am there so i think today i got this opportunity to present in front of hari sir the screen is visible sir yes yes visible yes yes okay. yes thank you thank you so the how i started thinking that uh, whether i should do replant or not whenever patient comes either in the night or in the morning so i check who is hoping for quick shift of replantation surgery for replantation surgery so i check the patient and relatives are they really willing for that or not then the doctor who send it they send it just for the case uh, to send for higher tertiary center and what they have told about the surgeon who is treating it and itself the treating surgeon whether the attitude is good at that time or not so what prompts me if suppose all rest of the things are good my patient is uh, ready to take that uh, risk that whatever we will try the uh, outcome he should expect uh, whatever he should not say that uh, we have not done anything so that time salvage of uh, one case has come i don't have the pre op picture of that but i know that i have the follow up result of that so this is the first case that i have done in, in jaipur when i came from ganga hospital this is a avulsion re uh, replantation that i have done and when i saw this results i was very much uh, in bad state that what is this when i was at ganga hospital there, there is no case like this and uh, the replantation if i will continue like this with such early deformity then what is the point of doing replantation like that i was thinking but then when the patient came to me 
he was so happy to show that uh, he can put the plugs are the deformity. I was thinking the deformity is ugly, but the patient is showing that, uh, sir, I can manage all the things. This is what I want to show you. Hello. So in this, I just want to show that uh, when I asked him that uh, which hand you use to pick up the phone and uh, what are you doing with the normal hand? He said, I use it for picking phone. I continue to do the work with the other hand. Then I say, what routine activity do you do? So he say, I am managing all the things like that. So I was happy just to check the patient is not complaining me that what is this ugly deformity is there. But uh, I have tried uh, thinking myself why it has happened. So this is because when I asked him why it has happened, he said, sir, someone has expired in my family and I couldn't come. And thus all the wound has opened up. And because of that, I was doing daily dressing there. And uh, that's why I got late. But uh, I thought that it's okay. So I'm happy to see the result of this patient. The patient is happy with this even too early deformity finger and he's doing best with this. The next thing that choose which finger to replant first. So this then the next case uh, which, which comes to me is this. Then I thought to start doing both the fingers. But which finger to start? Then I thought that I should start with little or index. So I start with the index replantation. So this is the second case. Okay, so and uh, the results are good. So that uh, further prompts me to do a second replant because this is I have heard from Hari sir and uh, SRS sir that uh, if you failed a uh, first replant, then second replant sh you should start do even the next case will come. Don't try to avoid that second replant because of the unsuccessful result. Otherwise it will be a fear for you and keep practicing for that. Then try to save every single finger like this finger has come. Yeah, this is I was going outside, but then I come back to start this replant and then it's a good result. Then the results are start, uh, started coming good uh, cosmetic deformity also and patient is using that middle finger as well for writing. Then try to save the thumb as most important finger to replant. This is a child which I replanted and um, this is which all structure that is nothing to explain over yeah, here. This is a artery. So this is the another part in which the patient is writing. <laughs> so when I thought that after making this lecture, what I have learned, so just to uh, tell Hari sir, sir, after making this lecture, I found that it doesn't contain any new idea, but when I analyze our own result and experience, we found that there are ones that makes a difference. It is just attention to simple detail and shifts the average outcome to optimal outcome. Thank you, Hari sir, sir, anything inside this? Yes. Very nice, <laughs> Amit. Amit, it was very nice. Actually, uh, it gives the right perspective of number one, attempting at all yes, times. Sir. You said you are, most of the time you'll find replants will come when there is a birthday party, when there is your anniversary yes, or some major important dinner. So that is uh, like karma. So if you avoid it once, next time it won't come. Okay, yes, if you sir. do it, then it will come again and again. So you, you need to remember that. So just to give an example, I'm now we are all coming for the big meeting. Normally before big meeting, we try to avoid big cases and God will always send you the biggest case you, you can think of. So we did a FFMT today, <laughs> just two days before coming for our national meeting. And Dr. Sabhavati was going to Singapore as visiting professor on Monday and we did a toe transfer on Saturday. So that is what happens. So you'll always find that you need to, so the, your willingness to come back I think if juniors have to take a lesson, the first uh, somebody calls you, sir, there is a finger amputation. So only two responses, verbal response, I will come. And uh, motor response, we can go into your car or scooter or vehicle and then reach your hospital. I think if you that yeah. have that in mind, you will continue to be a good microsurgeon. So that is one. Second is you did the index, which is nice. Because as I said, aesthetically, functionally, we have done now, we are going to publish the paper. These three fingers are much better than having these three and, and the ray amputation or index missing. A lot of doctor, doctors, a lot of textbooks will say having ulnar side is more power, more grip, but uh, aesthetically and now even functionally, we found that these three are better. So that's what your result is very nice. The first case, I think your KYS came through the joint. That's why it went for flexion contracture. 
so you anticipate this problem if you think the patient is not going to come back he is a manual worker then better keep it in extension getting stiff finger in little extension is always functionally useful because they will flex their mcp joint and that is enough to get you good function so the same patient if he is now having like this if he had got stiff in this position functionally it is much better so avoid bringing the k wires through the joint that is pip joint and that's why you got this so otherwise excellent results and uh, the most important thing is keep doing it so always remember as you are a micro surgeon and a replantation surgeon life will never become easy so today i am on call and i already many missed call have come from the ot <laughs> i have to go up and do so life never becomes easy you may become a big man big <laughs> president big society but still uh, what you have to do have to do so keep doing it as long as you keep doing it you will keep getting cases your center will keep becoming a big uh, replantation center i think that's a take away message big message in your talk thank you thank you sir thank you every rosa members please uh, can you stop share your amit mm -hmm. ah, okay 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 stop sharing yes sir so uh, i think uh, uh, to summarize uh, we have discussed a lot about uh, digital implantation its outcome and most important thing is uh, how to develop a reimplantation center so this is a good message uh, by dr hari sir and uh, and uh, and i clearly remember uh, 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 the srs sir used to say uh, throws the ego not the limb yes so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so with this uh, i would like to hand over to dr rahul katta sir uh, secretary roja to uh, summarize and yeah so uh, thank, thank you amit so first of all i would like to thank dr hari venkatramani for such a nice inputs and words of wisdom regarding the digital uh, replantation and uh, guiding our younger surgeons to and uh, pro uh, also promoting them to start the digital implantation in state of rajasthan so also the words of wisdom from the dr jitendran so it was very nice presentation good discussion good facts i hope we all have learned a lot today and it's the duty of the younger surgeon to spread the myth uh, spread the facts about the digital implantation definitely we have to develop many centers to serve the public to prevent the deformities to prevent uh, the disabilities in our population because now the training is good you all younger surgeons are trained it's your duty to spread the awareness so on behalf of rajasthan orthopedic surgeons association i would like to thank everyone especially to our guest national faculty and the faculty members from the roza younger surgeons for this nice discussion and nice webinar thank you thank you everyone thank you sir thank you thank you thank you sir so i think we can leave because thank you all for coming thank you sir thank you so thank you atesh thank you thank you, thank you anand
ओके बाय ओके बाय गुड नाइट थैंक यू Thank you, guys.